Yo, what is up guys? It's the Nightwing at Way of Life Esports coming at you guys with another League of Legends video here today. This is going to be the LEC 2021 Spring Split Week 5 Thoughts and Opinions joined here by T-Root. And T-Root is an avid, passionate, fanatic fan. <laughs> you, you guys did not have the best week, but we'll get into that later on. But how are you doing, man? What's up? I mean, as a fanatic fan, I'm fine. Uh... <laughs> We've been through worse. Uh, it's another O2 week, but eh, big deal. True, true. So what did you think about the games this week, actually? So <clears throat> these games were kind of weird for me to watch. Mm -hmm. The Vitality game was surprising on a lot of levels, but I was more disappointed with the Mad Lions loss than the Vitality loss. Like, as a fan, I think it's more okay to lose to teams that you're not going to meet in a playoff versus teams that you could meet in a playoff because we've lost two games to the mad lions now so That's like true. we lo we lose that tiebreaker now and who knows what that what that might look like in a best of five you know first round of playoffs if fanatic can't get in the top two by the end of the split because mm -hmm. mad lions you know have taken down teams like g2 before in the playoffs it just mm -hmm. happened last year so i think as a team mad lions would perform better obviously in a playoff situation um one of the games that uh surprised me this week was just <laughs> not really a game per se more like games was more like how bad misfits actually are just go to the summer split misfits and vitality just i don't i don't really think they're gonna they're gonna have some like big giant miracle run i just personally think it's over. Just go to the LEC 2021 Summer Split because I just don't see them working on all their problems and getting all the fix. Yeah, Fnatic did lose to Vitality, but let's be honest here. Fnatic, with their caliber players, still should be in no position, you know, obviously to not make playoffs. I think they'll still make playoffs. You only need like three more wins anyway. I think that's doable with the caliber of their schedule out after they obviously uh, face G2, which was what? This week coming up or next week, right? It's, it's this uh this Saturday. This Saturday. So, you know, after that G2 loss, even if they do lose to G2, I mean, let's be honest here, the rest of their games are easily winnable, I, I think. And I don't even think... It, it's hard to say. There, there's a lot of issues I had with how Fnatic played um, this week. But uh, there was one, one player that I wanted to talk about, which was uh, Magic Felix. He was hyped up for a very long time in Fnatic Academy. And I think he's looked really good, actually. I've liked the way he's been playing. He's looked like one of the more better mid laners in the LEC right now. Jeskla, mm -hmm. I personally think he... It's hard to say. He can pop off on a few games, but he could also look like the worst. There was one game he played where he was on Samira, and he just, like, queued or W'd in, and he just lost the whole team the game. I think he is a reason why Astralis either wins games or lose games, for me personally, you know? Um, overall, I don't think Astralis is terrible. I, I think when you look at how they've been playing, it could be better. Honestly, but I don't think that this is a situation like CLG and the LCS where they get leads and just throw their games. This team just gets leads and is the caliber of competition is just that much better. So if they get a lead, it doesn't matter. The better team just negates it. That's pretty much what it is. And well, and mm -hmm. it, it's interesting. Just speaking of Magic Felix, Magic Felix, since they brought him in instead of nu Nuke Duck, they've gone what two and two in the last two weeks. They've, with yeah. Magi carrying uh, one game on Corky and then one game on Syndra. So mm -hmm. the team is doing arguably better with Magi than they did with Nuke Duck for the three weeks that he was on the team. That's true. Magi Felix also has looked really good in, 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 in the uh, Corky game he had against G2 this week. Like, he's been a really solid midlander for them. I would love if he mm -hmm. was their franchise player and if they built around him in up-and-coming off-seasons because I think this is a player that could definitely be another, you know, quote-unquote LEC superstar if things point out into that direction. But for uh, Astralis, it doesn't look as bad, you know? I, and that's really crazy considering the fact that people had Astralis at, like, 10th place coming into the split and Vitality's over here just running it down consistently. They did have their upset win against Fnatic, but let's be honest here, like, are they really going to do anything outside of that? They lost the next day in pretty convincing fashion, you know, so. It, it was almost a perfect game. I think they only got two kills by the end of the game, but whoever they played uh, got, like, 19 or 20. Yeah. So it was it was a rough game. <laughs> um, Last week, you had actually asked me who was my uh, LEC 2021 Spring Split midseason MVP. Yes. Who, who, who did I say? 
You I, said you I would said. either give it to uh, Larson or Selfmade. Yes. So Larson is the person that I would choose because, like, even looking at this week, Larson has been just amazing. Like, Larson has provided so much for um, Rogue. He's massively stepped it up so far in these uh, five weeks for the LEC 2021 Spring Split. I think he has been a fantastic player. He's been roaming effectively. He's been winning a lot of his lanes. He's been uh, making his impact in the game spread out throughout the map. Um, I personally think him and Inspire don't work as well as they used to, but, you know, that's part of the core. Sometimes junglers and mid, mid laners don't synergize very well in certain patches. But, yeah, that would be my um, 2021 LEC Spring Split midseason MVP. It would be Larson. Now... You know, I know that might not be a lot of players MVP because that would probably either go to uh, players on G2. And G2 players obviously are fantastic. They play really well in most of the games. They have in performances too, but I think Larson has been a consistent high level top performer for Rogue so far this split. And I, I think personally, if you have any other mid laner on this team, it's just not really going to work out. But, you know, also I think that, uh, was it Trimby? Who, you know, I don't think yeah. he's that good, honestly. I don't think he's that good, especially after that Gragas game. Oh my god, this man threw his body in there just to die. He was, and he was playing Gragas. He eat into a full minion wave and he died. I was like, holy shit. So, that was, wasn't that back in the, the G2 game? This not was, this past weekend, but two weekends ago? Yeah, oh my god, dude. Like, I'm going to reserve my judgment for Trimby so far because there is like a lot of rookies in the LEC right now to really kind of judge, you know, where they're really going to be. But I don't think he's going to be the rookie that stands out like on the other teams like um, Kaiser, you know, that's on Mad Lions. Yeah. So. But um, well, it's, it's, it's hard for him to, to stand out, you know, when he's surrounded by such talented players. I mean, literally, the Trimby's goal right now is to learn from everybody and try mm -hmm. to grow into us, it, like to be the next Vander or something. Oh, sorry. But what did you say? Get for a second. Oh, uh, I was saying, um, Trimby's goal right now is just kind of to learn from the other pros, like how to be a pro, how to be a superstar. And maybe one day he'll be like the next Vander or the next Mickey or something. So it's it's really difficult to you know <laughs> call him out for one split. Does he want to? Does he want to be like Vander right now? <laughs> well, okay, historical Vander, not Misfits Vander. There's 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 a difference. This this for him is a Misfit bro, split. What, so bro, bro, what are, what are Misfits doing? What like, dude? I know we talked about it last week. I don't want to say I don't want to build narratives or bad narratives, but teams deficio has been running. They've been looking rough. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of kind of sketch. They start out really well, like Origin did for the past two years that we had Origin. What was left over from them, and then even mm -hmm. this year with Misfits, they honestly started out look, looking pretty well in a few weeks, give or take. We week one strong, week two. Still pretty strong. These last past weeks have been not their game. Like, they had that interesting game against G2, but G2 are never going to lose that game, man. Like, let's be honest here. Were they ever going to lose? Probably not, you know? Nah. The Misfits playstyle definitely resembles the playstyle that Origin had last year. Just slow, doing nothing, and waiting for team fights. Like... Yeah, I would I would argue that the slowest team in the league right now is is actually Rogue. I mean, I was getting bored watching their game with Vitality because, God, I feel like there was like 20 minutes and nothing happened. Like, <laughs> and the next thing you know, oh, they got Baron and now they're going to do something. Uh, okay, let's let's see how that goes. And mm -hmm. I feel like it was also the road game on day one that set the spring split record for longest first blood or something. It was. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, Rogue is is slow and like. They're high energy when they get a lead, but to get them started is kind of a headache to watch. Yeah, I I, I personally think that, like, what even goes into a, a match like that? Like, is that a team thing where, where they're going, okay, we'll just scale and we'll get the right moment for for a first blood? Or are they just content with just, like, what, what's that terminology, handshaking? And then they're just yeah, it's, it's 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 the it's the it's the the, the barren handshake. <laughs> um, I I think that kind of goes to the kind of what I've been preaching mm -hmm. that Rogue is becoming a Han Sama team. So literally, the goal is scale until he can like hard carry and won't get blown up by the enemy team. So as long as they give him a chance to farm to three items, then they might do something. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of the way Hans plays, and it's. I mean, it works. I just. Mm -hmm don't care for it. <laughs>
And I know you want to talk about Fnatic. Let's dive into Fnatic. That's probably what, what most of this episode is going to be about, is just diving into how bad Fnatic played this week. So Ugh. let's start with the Vitality game. So Fnatic drop a game to the, one. let's be honest, the worst team in the league, Vitality. Um, They've not been mm-hmm. playing good. Crown Shot's been the best player on the team. I mean, that's to be expected. Um, so I, I, with- I, still hold, I still hold that Skeens is the best player, and I think he actually showed it in the Fnatic match. He played really, really, really well this week. I have I haven't been too high, too high on him recently, but he played really well. And he was on Lillian. So, what do mm-hmm. you think went wrong with Fnatic this week? Draft, in-game synergy, calls. I I feel like it might have just been just general play style. I mean, I, I don't think the top lane matchup was really good with Whippo having Wukong into Aatrox. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was got solo killed like twice so i don't think this was a mechanical matchup i i I guess you could say it was draft diff but like i feel like the draft did not match the play style that fanatic are trying to do which as we've discussed is this um super aggressive kind of in your face comp or build and i don't know self-made was running in like 1v4 is olaf and it was it was a very sketchy game I, i i guess draft was the problem here but it seems like if Selfmade is not dictating the pace of the early game, and, well, I mean, that, that's what supports and junglers normally do anyway, because that, that's their role in the game. It just feels like Fnatic really are just content with just diving consistently. Like, I guess you, you can get away with that against worse teams than you, but I don't think the blame this week should fall on Niski. Like, what is Niski going to do? He's winning his matchup against Seraphine. He was winning his matchup that he that, that he was in in the... Uh, Mad Lions game, he was playing fine. Like, what are you gonna do if your support and your top laner are, are literally content with like fucking being like Sonic and like they're like gotta go fast, gotta dive them before they dive me? It's like, what? Wh- what? Where is the disconnect here? You know what I mean? Well, I don't remember if it was in the the Mad Lions game or the Vitality game, but there was a uh, mention from the casters about how, mm-hmm. at least in this example that I'm citing, um, they said Hill is saying maybe dying a lot, but he's dying with purpose like he's dying for them to get an objective or he's dying as a distraction so they were actually giving him props for dying so much for whatever reason um so eh, i guess if i had to put anybody on blast this weekend it might actually be Boybo because his set game day two was also really bad so yeah Ooh, yeah uh they picked set into nar like why like Mm-hmm. Is there a reason for that? That 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 like, I normally don't blame I, draft for for losses. You know that I, I don't normally blame draft. Yeah, at all. I, I I think that personally, you can play through bad drafts, quote unquote. A lot of people like to say, but picking set into Nar, like, come on, that's not. How do you really win well, that? And frankly, at least from a viewer perspective, I don't think Whippo is all that great on set. Like. He was kind of getting dunked on in the Excel game last week, the, the the one that happened before the remake in game one, where yes. he played set mm-hmm. into Gangplank and was just getting bodied by Excel. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, you put him on something like Volibear, where it's a little more, you know, guaranteed tank and a little more aggressive, he mm-hmm. just popped off. So, again, I think this was, they didn't pick top laners that worked well to Whippo's style. Like, his Wukong was passable i guess if he wasn't so behind Mm -hmm. and his set was just not good but niski was great upset was really popping off i think if he got a little more ahead he could have like 1v9 the mad lions game like there was a point where he just solo got a triple kill off off a dragon fight what Um, happened sorry you cut off for a second oh uh upset in the mad lions game there was a dragon fight and he basically like 1v3 for a triple kill or something and then started to solo the dragon. <laughs> in the so yeah, you're right. The Mad Lions. Okay, yeah, yeah, I have it right here. Okay, yeah. So so uh, upset did really well. Niski did really well. Self made tried to do his best, and then yeah, this was just a bad weekend for Whippo, and it mm-hmm. showed how you know how much the team relies on him or relies on Hillsing, obviously setting up their dives because if they want to, like they're they're a team where. If you temper their aggression and you can hold off their aggression, they look like or they 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 play as as, as if like they have to find another way to way to win the game that's not their conventional way, and they, they look so uncomfortable on that conventional way to play. 
Like they're a team. Yeah, I, I would kind of put them in, in, in along the lines of who, who in the L, uh, LCK plays like this. Um, uh, it's hard to say. Not LCK. Maybe the LPL. I would probably put them in, in the, along the lines of a team like um, like IG. I, I do think they're kind of like an IG or like like an FPX. You know, they're just a very aggressive kind of here's our style we're gonna stick to it kind of team yeah they're not a team that can i personally think that can play from behind very effectively because we we, mm -hmm. we saw them week to week even in the last um time they played face mad lions they were trying to just needlessly team fight force away fights winning. yeah awake yeah it's they've been doing that like every week though and though they have been winning games and i've even gave them praise when they're winning games it's fine to do that the issue here is that you can't constantly do that though the way to also win games sometimes is not to always force fights and get picks you can also win fights by setting up lane priority and side lanes perfectly and to obviously make sure that you're putting yourself in positions to win outside of just team fighting i i think their solution if they get behind is to just needlessly team fight which we saw in both the mad lions games yeah and that's why I feel like you looked at their social media as they're like, all right, back to the lab again. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna, uh, kind of lose to improve kind of thing where it's like, we know we messed up. Let's see if we can fix this and move into next week. And, you know, maybe it was just lack of preparation because they're putting a lot of their efforts into the G2 matchup for this weekend, which is big because if they can win again, then they'll have the tiebreaker head-to-head -head over G2. So That's crazy. If they actually, who knows? Oh, I have, I have a bet too. So on the uh, G two fan cast next week, if if G two win this past week, this past weekend coming up, I have to eat forty mm -hmm. spicy McNuggets. <laughs> Oof. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh my god, I'm a moron. Let me rephrase that. If Fnatic win, I have to eat forty spicy McNuggets from McDonald's, and my mouth can only okay. handle like ten of them because <laughs> you, guys, you guys are getting clapped this week. This time, you're, no. But I hope there's not internet issues this time around. I hope. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, like like I like I said when I uh, when I had to clap back at you guys, you, you can't blame the internet for you know just bad plays. Uh, um, <laughs> what else was was in the Fnatic game? See, no, like I really can't put it on any anything else but like Brippo just hard running it down, and I don't really understand what's this thing with um people where they want to like defend everything. That their player has done, like anybody can clearly see, they did not play well this week. And I no, and 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 they and Fnatic is the first to admit that they played bad. Like if you look at self made or you look at Blippo's Twitter, they're like, yep. "Sorry, we kind of we kind of dropped the big one here. So this is on us, and we'll work on getting better for next week." So a lot of the guys can admit to their own faults, admit to their own mistakes, and it's not like they need the org to like cover for them or to like you know play gatekeeper. Um, I, I think that's one of the things that makes Fnatic a good org is that they're giving their players a chance to take their own responsibility. And I, I at least hope to see some improvements for, for this weekend. Granted, it'll be on a new patch, so who knows if Diego is enabled, and apparently Bwipo has been popping off on Diego in solo queue. <laughs> dude, I love Diego. Like, he's such- I love that champion, dude. I cannot wait to start playing him more because I I got to got to play him one week for like for like a free rotation because I, I usually try to play like some of the new champions for like just where if I um they sometimes have him on, on like free rotation sometimes I'll play him and I'll see if I like him and I buy him in the client I like Vigo though mm -hmm. I really like him yeah dude I love playing new champions and the shit stomping on people because they don't know what he fucking does <laughs> <laughs> you're like well I don't know well, what was the thing uh I'm I'm a cutie pie says hey if the enemy team doesn't know what the fuck you're doing and neither do you 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 can still win games something like like that yeah something, something like that yeah oh my god um so so it'll be interesting to see how the g2 fanatic game goes yeah but this weekend was actually pretty for g2 um... i mean yeah for g2 it was a good weekend you know i'm i'm willing so, to you know say they, they played good they're, they're that probably... scion senna game oh, that was, though that was, was awesome <laughs> which you know and that brings up a whole other topic of what the hell is going on with shulka also, yeah, um, Shulka, the same thing that you brought up with another, another team of all haunts, some of being pretty much Rogue's team, and Larson, to a very big degree. Uh, Shulka's mm. problem is they're a Broken Blade team. That's it. Broken That's Blade it. and Gilius, and Gilius has just been playing, like, like I said, he's been coin flipping to hell, like... They went on a four-game right. winning streak. Now they're on a four-game hey. losing streak. Hey, man, it's like... I'll, I'll admit this. People call Hillisang and Whipple coin flip players. You've never seen a Gilius game. These mm -hmm. are that, too. Like, Gilius... 
Gilius Lily just it's like blabber for like NA. He just plays towards top lane, but for the different reason because he knows top lane is his only win condition to a certain extent. Like guys, Neon and Limit ain't it. No, <laughs> they're no no like they're not terrible bot lane, but they're not gonna put them. The, Neon and Limit don't give you the same edge. Like a Han Sama in a trip? No, no, it's just Han Sama. So there, like, there are, Sama. yeah, there, are, there are bot lanes better than than Shalka. Shalka is a top jungle, arguable mid team. Their, their bot lane is not their carry. Their bot lane is to support. I think if Shalka had players like Patrick and Torre, they'd be just. I was gonna. S- I was gonna say, hell, SK has a better bot lane than Shalka does. Dude, yeah, dude, I I was not a big fan of treats in week one, but he's surely, but. Slowly but surely, playing a whole lot better. And the AD carry he has, what, what, what's his name? Jezu? Right? Jezu. He, he is, I, w- I would argue, is the best Callista in, in LEC. Because mm-hmm. for... he had some nasty outplays this weekend. But anyway, back on G2. Yeah, uh, overall, it, 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 these are just pretty much standard G2 games. They just kind of just stop their competition. Like, I get yeah. people were kind of, like, kind of hyped to see a rematch between Shalka and G2. You watch professional sports. You, you know this probably better than anyone. This happens in every sports league. It's no exception to esports. A bad team can take some games off a good team. It happens. It's the regular season. It's like, but do they matter Life in the grand scheme of things? Yeah. What happened? I was going to say, it's the same thing with Vitality versus Fnatic. Like, I've said it before, e- LC- LEC is the league where everybody beats everybody, and yet somehow G2 always wins. So, <laughs> hey, this year the fact that, that like, lower skill teams can beat, you know, arguably higher ceiling teams shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, hell, that's just League of Legends in a nutshell. <laughs> like, one or, two out- one or two misplays, and your team is just bones. And we got our weekly predictions. So you got on Friday, first match, Mad Lions versus SK, XL versus Misfits, G2 versus Vitality, Rogue versus Shalka, and Fnatic versus Astralis. There's pretty much no good games on this day. Maybe except for Mad Lions uh, versus SK. First one. I guess, yeah, Mad SK would probably be the best game. Maybe Shalka Rogue if they turn it around, which. Eh. I don't see happening. So well, Shalka's interesting, but I don't think is gonna like turn any heads. I think Shalka's just gonna be as good as we see them right now. I think I it's hard to say if they if they hit their ceiling right now, but it looks like you can mm-hmm. tell what their ceiling is. Like Vitality, I mean, good luck losing in ten minutes to G two. Like, I mean, oh shit, God. Um, Astralis against Fnatic. I hope Fnatic can bounce back and not start going like. I hope they don't go zero four this week. That would really suck. Getting close to the end of the um the twenty twenty one spring split, split. Yeah. yeah that you don't want to start going you don't want to start slumping in the middle of right now because now you got the match of the week G two versus Fnatic in that rematch after the internet diff that <laughs> people were memeing on dude oh my god that was so hilarious on Twitter also well um, and and even then there's also on, on Saturday is XL versus uh SK which mm-hmm. again is gonna be a good middle of the table team depending on how that one goes. Be looking at sixth and seventh place. That's true. I think that these last coming weeks, every game matters for a lot of these teams. And then next week on 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 the Friday, so not uh this Friday, but the next one, you also have another match of the week. You have a rematch of G two versus Rogue, which I think is obviously something to look forward to. These past uh these up and coming Fridays are going to be really good. To sorry, these next few weeks for the LEC are going to be really mm-hmm. exciting because, as they always say, every game matters. And you also have shocks, you know, basically cursing Fnatic. Oh my God, <laughs> just ah uh, memes. <laughs> memes are memes are a bitch, man. But and I, then hey, uh, don't forget, week eight is a uh, is another super week to, to close it out. Yeah, because it's no, there's no more nine weeks for LEC anymore. It's just eight weeks. Close it out with a super week, which I think it's fine. You know, so sometimes yep. the nine week thing could pretty much burn you out if you've been watching League for a oh shit very long time, like I have. Um, that's yep. that's pretty much it. Oh. LEC team, congrats! You guys make some really great hype videos. The last G two versus Fnatic hype video. I swear they, they just keep getting better and better because some dude, dude on like Twitter, some dude was like, "Why is Nisky saying he can beat Caps? What do you want Nisky to say? He's gonna take Caps' shit in his mouth or something?" What? Yeah. Like, what do you want these people to say? Well, well, no, it's funny that you bring up "Reckless with My Heart," the the <laughs> hype video, because that was again a music video they made 
to hype up a regular season game. And that music video has almost a million views on YouTube now. Dude, it does. You are right. I, yeah, I, I remember I saw mm-hmm. Vettius tweeting about that. He's like, he's surprised about how how hyped it got. And uh, I'm I'm I've listened to it, you know, dozens of times. So I can't say I I love it, but I'm surprised that it's gotten well over a million views, which is awesome. The LEC production team is amazing, and that's just something mm-hmm. that you know I would love to see. I, I expect a good amount of standard quality pr- production from them, and I love their hype videos. You know, I love the G2 versus Fnatic hype videos we've gotten over the past years of these teams always facing. And you know, I love having rivalries like G2 versus Fnatic, Cloud9 versus TSM, and versus Team Liquid in the LCS. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, LCK's got their um, T1 versus KT roles that uh, Telecom Wars. <laughs> Obviously, and now you have a new rival in there, which is Gen G. You know, I love LPL's got a bunch of them. IG versus RNG, EDG versus RNG, fucking FPX yep. versus IG. I, I love rivalries like that. This dude on Twitter told me these don't exist anymore. You're just a loser, and you don't know what rivalries are. But what I you know. I do I do know that was a, a discussion at least on Hotline League a couple weeks ago. It was um how much the analyst desk is tries to push rivalries that might not exist anymore. I think the rivalries um, exist. It, it, they're not as... How would I say? They're not as more in your face. They're not as prevalent as they used to be. They're not prevalent and not as in your face like, like they used to be. I, I I think they're just, like, unspoken. You just kind of yeah. know them. Like, you just do your, mm-hmm. re- you do your research, you get the history down, and I think that's good. I, I think you should, you, sh- you should do your history on um these rivalries because i do think you'll understand why these teams they don't hate each other but it's just good friendly competition to obviously have you know i i love g2 well, and i love fanatic and I, and I love going up against fanatic in you know tsm when you know their matches come up it's something to look forward to and like having these hyped yeah. up matches is good because it gives the fans something to look forward to these are games you want to see these these are games that have everybody talking general well and, and i think that's uh that's another thing the lec does really well where it's like looking at matchups and that's why they have their uh they're mediocre rap battles of the LEC where it's like, okay, how can we amp up these rivalries a little bit more? Um, it's funny if you watch the one they did last season where it was Fnatic rapping against G2, rapping against Rogue, rapping against Mad Lions. Uh, that, that's a really funny video if you haven't seen that. And that pretty much concludes it. Anything else you want to say, say man, before we uh, head out of here? Uh, Dignitas top four. Okay, this man's trolling. All right, so <laughs> can can you dig it? No, I messed it. Don't even pay attention to what the fuck I just said there. I just messed it all up. All right, so um, yeah, Team Vitality is the best team in the LEC. If you flip the standings upside down. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're not wrong. <laughs> Shaka said that last year too. Hey, if you put the standings upside down, Shaka would be number one. They don't. Shaka doesn't uh... beat anybody. Oh my god. I I hope to see I I ten bucks says Gilius gets benched by the end of the split. That's where I'm at right Holy now shit. on on Shalka. You're crazy man. All right, dude. See you next week. I'll see you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe. Most of all, enjoy. I'm the Nightwing. Way of Life Esports is signing out. Peace. Have a great day. Goodbye. Also, G2 is gonna clap fanatic in in, in the rematch. <laughs> uh, let's make sure I had that last one.